how you can buy your first home even if you've got zero dollars in the bank today in under two years. First home buyers using the stamp duty concessions and under the first home loan guarantee scheme, you only need $30,000 in savings to buy a $600,000 property. Now 600K isn't gonna get you anything super deluxe, but it is gonna get you a rock solid investment property in any state across the country including New South Wales as the most expensive state. So how to make it happen, you can use the Money Smart Goal Saving Calculator if you wanna figure out your own timeline, but I've just picked a number here and said, if you were to save $375 a week over 18 months, you would save up a total of $30,000. Now I get that in a cost of living crisis, inflation crisis, that saving $375 a week is not necessarily easy. If you've got a partner, you can share the load. If you don't, maybe it needs to take a little bit longer, but either way, I can tell you that finding a way to make it happen is gonna be super valuable because every year that you don't do this, the property market is increasing further and it is just getting harder for you to buy. So try and find a way to make it happen. Don't forget about increasing your income, which is a lever that most people don't think about that can actually mean that you save more without having to sacrifice. In a low unemployment environment like what we're seeing today, there's a serious opportunity there. I should call out that to get the first home buyer benefits, you'll need to live in the property for a period of time, but moving forward beyond that period of time, running the property as an investment compared to your own home is going to make it significantly cheaper because of the fact that you get tax deductions for the interest costs and ongoing property costs on an investment property compared to your own home. So if you've got the cash flow and the this property is one that you would wanna live in, you of course welcome to do that. But if you want the extra dollars, then think about flipping it over to an investment property at the earliest opportunity. The next level to this strategy is that you keep then saving at that same rate post the property purchase, then you've got a couple of things happening. One, your savings is going to be building and the equity in your property is going to be building, which should allow you to then buy your next investment property a whole lot sooner.